Well, hey there, my name is Ben from Circle Canoe Games, and in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to play Banshee 7. Banshee 7 is a one player, one card game that pits three heroes against a wailing Banshee. It plays in under 10 minutes, so let's go ahead and jump right in. To play the game, you'll need the card, which does have the rules printed on the back, a dry erase marker, and two D6 dice. Let's get a look at the lay of the land on the card. Up at the top, we have the Banshee. This is where the Banshee's health will be tracked. We have uh, the attack chart, which we'll be using in each phase of the game. And then we have the three heroes. We have two columns for hero one, two, and three um, that you'll be using to track their statistics as well. And you'll notice that each hero is a little bit unique, which is important as we get later into the game. The game starts with battle preparation. We have to assign values to the different stats for each of the heroes, as well as give health to the Banshee. We do that by rolling two dice. So normally you take the higher die and assign it to one column from one of the heroes. So we have four and we can choose which one we want to assign it to. So we have four and we can go and uh, let's just say we will go down here, this column. We'll talk about why you would choose one column over another in just a minute. And then over here, we have two, and so that means we give two health to the Banshee. Then we would roll again. So again, I get to choose any one of the categories here. I might go ahead and choose this one, and the remainder is here. So that continues until all six of these hero columns have at least one X in them. After that, then we would roll one more single die, add that to the Banshee, and then you're ready to begin. So this begs the question, does it matter, right? Does it matter which uh, column that you actually fill up? Well, yes, it actually does. So the heroes have four main stats that are spread across the different columns. First, we have the little ax here, which is attack. So when you are rolling dice, you can modify those dice by using some attack. Next, we have this shield right here, and that is your defense. That is when the Banshee gets hits on heroes, you're gonna be using up your defense from this column or this column. Next, we have this little horn that is courage. Courage can act as either attack or defense. Here's another attack. Uh, and then we have magic represented by these little runes. Magic allows you to reroll. Uh, and you can do that either when the hero rolls or when the Banshee rolls. So it can save you from a bad roll either way. Okay, so now we know how we prepare for battle and why you might choose one stat over another to fill. Let's go ahead and jump to the game being ready. Okay, quick note here, I rolled a six and you'll note that some of the columns are shorter than six. So what do you do? Well, you're actually allowed to fill up a column that was up to five. And then if you still have more left on a die, you can continue and fill in the rest on another column that already has marks in it. So I could come over here and mark the sixth one. Okay, so now all the prep for battle is done, so we move straight into the battle. Uh, and the battle is going to consist of the Banshee and the heroes taking turns rolling two dice and using this chart to uh, mark the results on the card. So you can see from the card here, if the Banshee rolls a seven, they get three hits. If they roll a six or eight, they get two hits. If they get five or nine, they get one. And if they roll a pair, they get four hits. So what does that mean you do? Well, that means that either from the hero's defense or courage, you have to remove four marks. So I would come in here with an eraser and remove four X's. When the heroes attack, you can see their chart over here. It's a little bit different. If they get a seven, they uh, get two hits on the Banshee. If they get a six or eight, they get one hit. Five or nine, it's no hits. And a pair, it's two hits, okay? But five or nine are still on the chart. That brings us to our attack. So if you roll a six or eight or a five or nine, you can choose to spend some of your attack in order to increase your attack a little more. So instead of rolling a six and getting one, you could choose to spend one attack, and then the hits you would get would be two. Now, what happens if you roll something that is not on the chart, right? You get a four or lower, you get a 10 or higher. 
Well, both the Banshee and the heroes have a mechanic for that. So if the Banshee rolls something that's not on the chart, they fill out one of these bone Xs. If they fill in all three, they immediately get three hits on the heroes. Likewise, if the heroes, they roll something that's not on this chart, or if they do a roll that has a one in it, they get to fill out one of these luck. If they fill out both luck, the next time they roll a seven, they get four hits, and those hits can't be blocked by a circle icon. We haven't talked about that, so what's the circle icon? So you can see the heroes have some of these spots that are circles, the Banshee has some of these spots that are circles, so what's up with that? Well, anytime the heroes or the Banshee is hit and uncovers one of the spots that has a circle on it, the attack stops there. The hit counts as being fully satisfied, or the cost count as being fully satisfied. But coming back to this luck, when you have both luck filled out and you roll a seven, you get four hits that don't stop at one of those circles. So that can be a really powerful hit on the Banshee. So let's just go ahead and do a couple turns for the Banshee and the hero, and then we will, uh, you know, you'll get the sense of the game. So first up, the Banshee always attacks. Okay, they roll a six. Six on the chart is two hits. So now the heroes get to choose. Basically, out of the courage or the defense, where do I want to take two hits from? Um, I'm going to go ahead and say two hits from here. Now it is the hero's attack. Rolled an eight. An eight for them is one hit. Since there's that circle icon, one is the most I could hit the Banshee right now, unless I'm using luck. So I'm not gonna use any attack to modify that to make it a little more powerful. Then we're gonna go ahead up to the Banshee again. Okay, a nine. Once again, so the Banshee gets one hit. That's good for the heroes. Uh, I'm gonna keep marking off over here. And the heroes. Heroes got an eight. Uh, but at this point, I could choose to use an attack to turn that eight basically into a seven to get two hits instead of one. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. Use this right there. And so that would mean two hits. So you can see play is going to continue like this. The Banshee takes a turn, heroes take a turn, you're removing basically health from each other. So when does the game end? Well, the game ends either when all the health has been removed from the Banshee. Uh, when that happens at the end of a turn, then the heroes win. The heroes lose if when the Banshee attacks, there's no more courage or defense to defend the attack. Um, so there is one more uh, sort of battle rule that you need to know about, and that is what happens if, the, if a hero is completely removed off the board. Do you lose? No. As soon as that happens, you get two things. One, the Banshee gets an extra health, and the heroes get two health in one of the columns that already has a mark in it. So I couldn't come over here and give this guy back some more life. I would have to come over here and I would say, let's go one, two, right? And then game continues as it is. Uh, so you can see, well, you know, it's normally not a good thing for one of your heroes to die off. That can be strategically timed at a moment that actually helps your other heroes and helps you win the game. And that's pretty much it. You know, there's a few details here and there that you would figure out as you are playing the game. Of course, all those details are in the rules on the back of the card. Uh, so now I'm just gonna play out this game and we'll see uh, who wins, the Banshee or the Heroes. And as I said at the beginning, if you want to get your hands on Banshee 7, the best way to do that is through my website, circlecanoegames.com. It's available as a print and play, or you could buy a printed copy. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video.